If you agree to do a job, always do 100%. If I'm getting paid a dollar or a million dollars, you're still gonna get 100% of me because I agreed to do it. And, and another lesson is don't do it for money. Part of my career development came from working on an album that was actually fairly big, but I was the engineer and I, I think I really fabricated the sound of that album. So the next record comes along and they want to keep the same dream team alive and he said, you know, we're going to hire you to do this. And, and they upped the money and they upped the points, blah, blah, blah. But the music wasn't cool. And along came uh, Josh Homme from Queens of the Stone Age and he sent me a cassette tape of some of the stuff he's been working on and said, I want to make a record, I don't have a label coming out of my pocket. No money, let's go to the desert and do this. And the second I heard one song, I was like, this is way hipper than this shit. I'm getting paid an insane amount of money to do. So I'm not going to take all this cash. I'm going to do this, which I really love. And this is cool. And there's no guarantee, but at least I'm into it. So never do it for the money. Hey, I'm Joe Barisi. We're in uh, my private studio. It's called JHOC, Jayhawk, or Joe's House of Compression is what it stands for. Welcome, aloha. I didn't really want to go to college after high school. I just wanted to learn music, so I basically took some time off, played in bands, then decided I needed some formal education. I went to University of South Florida for a while and studied classical guitar, and they had a, a recording studio at the university there which kind of gave me the bug of, it was more electronic, but at least bringing people in and recording stuff. And then I ended up going down to the University of Miami to study classical with a really great classical teacher. And they had a formal recording program. So I, I got into it there and then I moved to California and decided I would try to make a go of working in studios. So I kind of started freelance assisting and made my way around Southern California, assisting in different studios. And, Sound City was one of the studios that I, I had a roommate that worked there and one day their tape machine remote died and he called up and asked if I wanted to be a tape op in the true sense of the word. So I sat in the back of the room and punched in on the tape machine and that sort of put me in the door at Sound City. From there on it was um, meeting different producers and um, working my way up that way. At Sound City I, I did a bunch of Caius records as an engineer and mixer. Um, first Queens of the Stone Age record, um, Tool, the last Tool record, 10,000 Days, um, the last Soundgarden record, last Slipknot record. A lot of mostly hard rock and heavy metal stuff because that's what I'm really into. My first session in this studio was Bad Religion, which I've, who I've worked with on maybe four albums now. I take the sound of the band and I just, you know, maybe give them a steroid shot. And, up in a notch, but I also like to have, if you look around, you can see there's all kinds of wacky gear everywhere in here. And I think I, what I bring to the table a lot of times is experimentation. I mean, who knew a Mark's phone could sound so cool on a record or, you know, where am I gonna strategically put a triangle hit or having an organ laying around or some weird acoustic guitar and a crazy tuning. So I think that's part of my, my area of expertise. People tell me that the things that I work on have a lot of separation, which is something I work on a lot. Um, and that, that really just comes from listening. I mean, it comes down to looking at how you play and realizing how I can modify your sound to make that sound better. What I miss when a project is done is the camaraderie and the friendship that kind of disappears for a little bit because now you're not hanging out together anymore. But. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy with everything I've worked on. I, a lot of times you do listen to stuff and you go back and go, wow, what was I thinking? Or I could do this so much better now, but it is a snapshot in time, really. And like I said about being in a service business, I'm, if you're happy and I'm happy, that's it. It's a, That's the way it was back then. Obviously now maybe I've got a new technique to make the kick drum sound a little bit better, but in the end, no one analyzes shit like that anyway, man. If you can shake your ass to it or if you want to drive fast when you hear a song. I almost got pulled over the other day because something came on the radio and I was like speeding. I was like, oh, fuck. What do I tell the cop? Oh, yeah. This song came on and made me drive fast. You know what I mean? If, if, you, if you get emotional when you hear stuff, that's all that matters in the end. So if you can still maintain that focus while you're making a record, that's really all that matters.